GRS has opened up the build a FU edition on Kickstarter, which is available until August 2025. This machine has many features that the retro gaming community has been wanting in a home arcade. A few of the notable features are dual 8-way joysticks, electronic 4 and 8-way gate switchers, spinners, a color LED trackball, volcano push buttons, a commercial coin door, and for the display there are two options, a 19-inch display that rotates automatically for horizontal and vertical games, as well as a 26-inch 4x3 display option. The CPU is a powerful RK3588, which is more powerful than the latest Raspberry Pi 5. It also has swappable control decks, and this isn't even a complete list. One thing that was impressive is that the 200k funding goal was reached on Kickstarter within 7 minutes after launch. Glenn is a good friend, but he didn't sponsor this video, but providing some background is important to set the stage for the rest. The software that will be running the Buildicade FU will be the Arcade Operating System. I was curious what the experience might be like with Arcade, so I purchased the currently available GRS Viper board, which has the Arcade software pre-installed on the 32GB EMMC memory. In this video, we'll take a look at the current version of Arcade running on this board, but do keep in mind that things may look different when the GRS Viper Venom, that is, the more powerful version, is available in the full-size Arcade cabinet. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. The GRS Viper is a single board computer that was designed for the DIY arcade community. You can use it with your own custom arcade projects, with the GRS build a -Cade, or if you have an II Arcade, it can be used to upgrade that machine with the Ultimate Control Panel and Switcher. Keep in mind, with the build a and I Arcade, additional items are needed to complete the project. In this video, we're going to focus on the SBC itself and the pre-installed Arcade software, that is, R-Cade software. Very clever. The package has three QR codes that you can scan to read the setup guide, manual, or assembly guide. I'll place links below for each. This board retails for about $55 US dollars and is less expensive than many other options. In the package is a GRS Viper sticker, a 32 gigabyte SanDisk micro SD card, small screwdriver and screws, another cool Glenn's Retro Show sticker. The star of the show is the board itself. An interesting design choice is that the main board is socketed. You can remove the two screws holding it down, bend the sides out slightly, and remove the main board from the I.O. board. This allows for easy future upgrades. The CPU is an RK3566, which is more powerful than some popular home arcade products, though not quite as powerful as a Raspberry Pi 4. There is a 40-pin GPIO or General Purpose Input-Output Connector, two USB 2.0 ports for a controller, keyboard, or other devices, one USB 3.0 port, on the side is a 12-volt power input, a MIPI DSi port that supports up to 4K output, and on the opposite side is a 3.5mm headphone jack, 5-volt USB-C input, a micro HDMI port for connecting to your HDMI monitor or TV, and on the bottom, a micro SD slot for adding your games to external storage. To start, we'll add the Wi-Fi antenna to the board. It's super easy. Just take this small connector, position it over the port nearest the USB 2.0 ports, give it a little push, and that's it. Now we'll plug in the micro HDMI to a portable monitor, I'll be using a clone Xbox 360 controller for this video. Then connect up the power and the board starts to boot up. The arcade software is already pre-installed for you on the internal EMMC storage, so you don't need to install anything yourself. Now we'll transition over to video capture to get a better look at the arcade software. 
When Arcade first starts up, you'll be prompted to review the license agreement. After reviewing, you'll want to select Yes to accept the terms, otherwise you'll only be able to use the video and music player. From there, you'll enter the main UI, which will begin playing some nice mellow background music. You can navigate the emulators and applications by moving left to right. There are over a hundred retro gaming systems available, which will show up in the list after installing games and updating the game list. What you see here is just a very small subset. We'll now connect Arcade to the internet by pressing Start on the controller. Then select System Settings and Network Settings. I'll select my network name or SSID. Then enter the Wi-Fi password. And within a few seconds, you'll be connected. You may need to back out of network settings once or twice until you see the IP address up at the top. This is pretty common on a number of distributions. Before we download the upgrade, I'm really curious to see what the NetSurf browser looks like. I've not seen this in other distributions, and to use it, it looks like we'll need a keyboard and a mouse. I'll go ahead and connect one, and we'll try it again. The aspect ratio is a little bit off, but otherwise it looks pretty good. A mini wireless keyboard with a trackpad would be ideal for this particular browser. Anyway, to exit the browser, just click the close button in the upper right to return back to our arcade. Let's go into the main menu option, or press the start button and go into system settings. At the bottom of the list, we can select the option to check for upgrade. Great! Looks like there's an upgrade available. However, it's recommending we make a system backup, which can take up to one and a half hours. I'll go ahead and select yes, and we'll come back after the backup's complete. The backup is complete, and now it's asking if we want to download the upgrade. Sure we do. Let's go ahead and select yes. The upgrade is now ready. We'll select yes, and reboot to perform the upgrade. The upgrade is now complete, and Arcade will continue booting with this cool intro video. Game on. <laughs> there are several freeware games pre-installed on Arcade. Under main is a licensed copy of The Adventures of Robbie Roto. It's a game I don't recall playing in the arcades back in the day, but it is a fun and addictive maze game. One of the biggest hurdles for those new to retro gaming and emulation is installing your own games. Well, Arcade makes it very easy to download your games. Just press Start, then Game Settings, and move down to the very bottom of the list and select Game Downloader. Then select the emulator you want to play, such as MAME in this case. You'll see a notice that the games are not hosted by arcade servers and agree to download games that you are legally entitled to. Select Agree. Then select the Games to Download option. Pick the game. I'll go ahead and pick Defender as I own the original arcade cabinet. You can page backward and forward through the list. Select the game and you can save it to internal or external storage. External being something like a micro SD card, which we'll set up in a few moments. Now select Download, Selected Games, and the games will be downloaded. It's really that easy. Next, reload the game list, and you'll see it not only downloaded the game, but the box art and metadata for it also, automatically. And of course, the game plays great too. Before we move on to setting up external storage to a micro SD card, I have a brief ad from our sponsor, yours truly. Do you love classic arcade games? This retro-inspired word search book is for you. 113 pages, packed with throwback favorites like Pac-Man, Centipede, Donkey Kong, and many more, plus game history for each game. Whether you're treating yourself or surprising the gamer in your life, it's the perfect nostalgia-packed gift. Now available on Amazon, Link below. There are actually a number of ways you can copy your own files to Arcade. You can add games to the internal 32GB EMMC storage, or use the included 32GB micro SD card. 
If you want to use a larger card, you can do that as well. Just insert the card into the micro SD slot on the bottom of the Viper board. From the menu, select System Settings and External Device Actions. Select the Prepare External Media for Arcade option. Select the card, and it'll create all the folders on the card so you can easily copy over your games. The card is now ready to go. Just remove it from the Viper board, insert it into a micro SD card reader like this one, then plug it into your computer and we'll add more games. Now that we have the micro SD card plugged into a USB port on our computer, we can copy our files to it. Arcade created the folder structure here for us in the previous step. As you may recall, some systems require BIOS files. If so, you can copy them to the BIOS folder. Our games or ROMs will get copied to subfolders within the ROMs folder. Let's start with BIOS files. On the left window is my network share. I'll select the BIOS files that I want to copy and drag and drop them into the BIOS subfolder. On the right is the micro SD card that was prepared by Arcade. If we go into the Atari 2600 subfolder, we'll see a ROMs underscore readme.txt file. If we open the file, it will tell us what ROM extensions are recognized by Arcade, such as .a26.bin, .uce, .zip, and .7z, which are 7-zip archives. The files I have here are all .a26, so I'll select all of them and then copy them over to the micro SD card. At this point, just repeat the same steps for all other games that you want to copy over to the micro SD. Now we just plug in the micro SD card back into the Viper board. As soon as we do, Arcade automatically detects the card that was added and prompts if you would like to reload the game list. I'll select yes. The auto detection takes place because by default in system settings, external device actions, auto mount eMMC and SD cards is on. Now if we back out and then navigate over to the Atari 2600, It'll scan for images and video for the games on the micro SD card. Selecting external zero at the top will then show us a list of all the Atari 2600 games on the SD card. This allows easy launching from internal or external storage. You can also copy your files across your local network. In Windows, just enter backslash backslash an IP address of Arcade and press enter. If prompted, the username is root and the password is Linux. From here, you can double click on the share and you'll have full access to both the internal eMMC storage as well as the installed micro SD card. If we go into the BIOS folder, we can add additional BIOS files as we did earlier across the network. And under ROMs, if we again go to the Atari 2600 folder, we can see the built-in Flappy the Duck game and a folder above it called USB Zero. If we navigate into that folder, we can add or remove any games directly to the card. Once you're done, in Arcade, press Start and move down to Refresh All Game Lists and select Yes to make any newly added games available. There are a few other network-related topics we should discuss. If you go into System Settings, then Network Settings, at the bottom you'll see an option for Advanced Network Settings. Here you can change the host name. For example, if you have more than one arcade system on your network, you can change the name to Arcade 1, 2, and so forth. Under Network Drive Settings, you can use this to entirely replace the micro SD card for your games. You would enable the Network Drive, Set the path and credentials, and you can manage all of your games from a remote network share. If we select the Start File Browser option, we can also use a web browser on our network to access Arcade. For example, if I switch to my PC and open a web browser, I can enter the IP address or host name of Arcade here. Then, when prompted, enter the default username of root and the password of retro. If you're having any issues, you can generate a support file and send it to Arcade for them to assist. While unlikely you'll ever need it, you can also set up a support session for remote assistance from the Arcade team. 
You can also browse and manage internal and external micro SD files directly from the web interface. You can go into ROMs, then Atari 2600, and view, add, or remove any files that we want. If we click on USB 0, we can see the contents of the Atari 2600 games on the micro SD card. To add more files, we can also click the upload icon in the upper right to upload an entire folder or a file. And if we click logs, we can view various log files directly from within the browser. This would be handy for troubleshooting. And when you're done, just click the log out button. In addition to Kodi, which supports 4K video decoding, you can also simply launch videos directly from the movies category which is a nice quick way to jump in and watch a movie on your gaming system. Another nice feature is the support for Netplay. Here you can browse games that people have hosted on the Netplay lobby, then join a game. From within your game list, you can also press the select button and start or join a game from there. I'll cover this feature when the new Viper Venom RK3588 board is available for the FU edition. While we wrap up this video, I'll show some gameplay captured during testing of the Viper board. There are many more options available within Arcade that allow you to fully customize your experience, such as changing the theme, connecting additional accessories such as the GRS send-in shotgun, and much more. After testing Arcade with the GRS Viper, I'm more excited than ever to experience the Viper Venom on the GRS Build-A-Cade FU Edition. The ability to support hot swapping control panels, the faster processor, automatic switching of four and eight way sticks, the screen rotation, and more, it's going to be the most impressive arcade machine available in its price range. I'll place links down below where you can back the Kickstarter for the GRS build a FU edition, which is only available until August 2025. I hope you enjoyed this look at the GRS Viper. If you did, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please subscribe to the channel. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.